In today's video, I want to show you a quick and dirty construction. Sometimes I've been uh, told that uh, FreeCAD is complicated and my videos, my constructions are complicated and so on. And there's a couple of programs where all the things are much easier and you can reach the point from zero to your 3D print much easier. Well, in this video I'm going to show you that this is not the fact uh, in every case. Surely, if you want to construct something complicated, you might need complicated things in FreeCAD, but uh, FreeCAD can be very easy also. So, the video is meant for the beginners more or less, because it's not a complicated thing, but uh, I know some of you or who are not beginners also work more with part design nowadays and I want to do this in the part workbench. So if you have never worked with FreeCAD before probably you look to one of my other videos for the bare beginnings. I'm not going to talk about configuration setup and all the things so uh, we're going to start with uh, constructing this little gadget <coughs> which is a holder where I want to tighten a plastic screen to a 3D printer's front using a bolt and this is to keep it um, upright and this slot is for, or this corner is for the plastic sheet itself. So, how did I construct this little thing? Let's start from scratch. We close it and we start with FreeCAD from point zero. Uh, this is in German because um, the start page is in German so it's no problem. Uh, you will see this in English, but we're not going to use the start page anyway. So we're working with version 018 in a current build. That's 15969er. I'm working on Windows and this is a Pi 3 um, Conda build. If you look to the download pages, you can see there's two different Windows builds meanwhile. And it is recommended to uh, use the Conda build, to try using the Conda build, because the future, maybe 019, will only be using Python 3. And so it's uh, easier for the developers to find errors early with this uh, Python 3 version. As usual, I'm working in the gesture mode for the mouse movements. Be sure if you want to follow my tutorial and do it yourself, um, switch to the same mode. Good, so as I said we're gonna work in the part workbench. The part workbench is a workbench where we work with boolean operations against so-called primitives. Sounds complicated but isn't. Okay, let's start with creating a new empty document. Here we don't see anything. Let's start with creating a cube. In the moment we click create a cube, the cube appears on our screen. We can move the cube and the cube is with three equal extensions. If we click the cube in the model tree, we can see the measurements used. By default, every cube, when we start it, from here, from the icon, it will be created as a cube with 10 millimeters length, 10 millimeters width, and 10 millimeters height. So we have to adjust this first before we continue. In my case, it shall be 20 millimeters long 
20 millimeters wide and 10 millimeters in height. So that is the whole extension of my final part. You can think about having a block of wood in front of you where you now start to work with. So the first thing that I'm going to create against it is the hole for the bolt. So let's create a cylinder first. In the moment we create the cylinder, the cylinder also appears at the same place where our cube has started, which is the point zero, 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 and that's on the opposite side. If we go here and look to the lower left of the screen, you can see here, you can see that is point zero, zero, zero. So both originated at the same point. And the height of the cylinder is the same as the height of the cube. Only if we click it here, you can see it has a radius of two millimeters which luckily in this case is just the same as I need it finally. It's gonna be a four millimeters screw that I'm gonna put through that. Okay, so now how do we move this one from here? The first and most simple way is to use the transform tool either by taking the context menu selecting transform or just by double clicking. Then we have the transform tool. The transform tool has three arrows. One moves to the Y axis, one moves, uh, that was the Z axis, one moves to the Y axis and the blue one moves against the set axis. We also have these balls which are used for rotation, which we're not going to use in this simple design. If we're not lucky with one millimeters translations, we can change this. We can change this to less or more, that's no problem. Also for the rotations, you might not be lucky with 15 degrees of rotation, you might need something different. But for us, in this case, it's very simple. We're just gonna move in the X and Y direction and we will move it to the middle of our cube. So now it's just in the middle of the cube. And to create a hole instead of having a cube, uh, having a cylinder in here, what we do is we first select the cube, then we select the cylinder, and next is we use a Boolean operation, which is a cut. Make a cut out of two shapes. If we do that, the cylinder just disappears and leaves us an object called cut. And when we look deeper into the object, we can still see there is a cube and there is a cylinder. I can use the space bar to switch the elements on and off. So that is how it works. We have two source elements creating a destination element. So the next destination element that we want is another, another cube which cuts away the three millimeters for our sheet plus three millimeters for our edge to hold it uh, straight upward. So let's create a new cube. But this time we're gonna do another way. We're not gonna create it this way. 
we're going to switch to creation of a parameter parameterized sorry <laughs> creation of a parameterized geometric primitive in this case we select our object which is a box in this case and now before it is created we give it the measurements so this is going to be a height a length of 20 millimeters a width of 17 millimeters and a height of 6 millimeters and we create it and we can see there it is and all we need to do is we close we have the box we take our first object the cut we take the box and with the cut we cut it away so this is the six millimeters to cut away everything from here and now we can do the next thing we create a new cube and this time we're taking the old way again making it 20 wide making it 3 in width and 3 in height sorry we take 6 in width and now we transform we move it down here we move it up here straight through take it one back gives it a little more space here and that's it so all we gotta do is we combine these two to one element which is a union cut 001 and cube 001 we apply we close and we've got the fusion now finally let's look again how it is made so we have our first cube the cylinder giving the cut with a box against it giving the fusion with the second cube so that's the final element and all we need to do at the end is we take fusion we switch to our mesh design workbench we make sure we selected the fusion we click create mesh from shape click to standard click OK we can now switch our original fusion off and we see we now have a meshed object which we can export I'm exporting this to cut 002 and just for the proof I'm switching on my kiss slicer moving it in a little bit here I click to open 3d models cut 002 and that was the previous one we can see it here so all we have to do is uh, just move it a little bit with X up that will be a proper orientation for the 3d print 
I click slice and I can see how it looks finally as a 3D print. So that was it for slicing and that was it for the whole thing. So it's really quick and dirty. Uh, if I wouldn't have talked it would have been a five minutes uh, construction for a little custom part. Very easy. Thanks for watching and uh, look forward to more videos from me. Thank you.